The month of May 2019 is multiplication through healthy relationships. Multiplication through healthy relationships. Last week we were privileged to share the message on Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, today we are talking um, to something that is very interesting because I am a youth, so I love to hear about youthhood, becoming a successful youth. Becoming a successful youth. Multiplication through healthy relationships. Many people have toxic relationships. That's why their lives are toxic. Their environment is toxic. And their destiny is toxic. There's no hope. It takes knowledge and skill, competencies, for you to be able to become a successful youth. Can I tell you something? The world is waiting for the youth. Amen and amen. amen. The world is waiting for the youth. We are the hope of the nations. Right? In most countries, when we say youth, we are talking of from the age of 16 or 18 to 35. Praise the Lord. Amen. That means Mamutoko and myself, we are youths. We are in our mid-40s. <laughs> but our hearts are youthful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are in that age bracket, this is the time to maximize and build a foundation. You are building a spiritual foundation. You are building a mental foundation. You are building a financial foundation. You are building a health foundation. Every aspect of your life, this is the time. And we say that is the learning time. When it comes to finances, when you are younger, especially before the age of 30, is your learning time. From there, we expect you to enter the earning phase. Unfortunately, after 60, there is what is called the yearning phase. Learning phase, earning phase, and then the yearning phase. Studies have shown that majority of elderly people when they are asked what is their greatest regret, they say they regret the things that they could have done which they did not do. Hello? They regret the things that possibly the opportunities they should have exploited which they didn't exploit. Somebody said, the richest place in the world is the graveyard. Why? Because there are musicians that died without releasing one album. There are soccer players who could have become the best footballer in the world, but for some reason, they are lying in the grave. They couldn't do it. There are multi-millionaires. The potential was there, but it never happened. Now, you and I are still alive by God's grace, not by might nor by power. Friends, let's use our time wisely. Becoming a successful youth doesn't just happen. It's not a wish. If wishes were horses, even beggars would ride them. Because everybody has wishes. Wishes are a free commodity on the market. You just pick as many as you like. And nobody stops you. People who make it in life, they do it intentionally. They plan for it. It doesn't just happen. 
becoming a successful youth. To be successful means producing positive results continuously. You cannot be number one in class for two or three years of your education. Then after that, you become number one last. And then you say, I'm a successful person because the first three years of my schooling, I was number one. Becoming successful means you continuously beat your record. You compete with you. Amen and amen. Friends, the world is waiting for the youth. If we are not careful to pray more than we have ever prayed, to work more than we have ever worked, to make money more than we have ever made money, to serve God more than we have ever done it, I'm telling you, the foundation is bad. I don't care how good a building you built on a poor foundation, you're wasting your time. You are trying to construct a six-story building for argument's sake. And you just save money, you know. You buy cheap, cheap materials. You look for people who are not experienced. You pay them little, little. And then you do a poor foundation. And then after that, you say what? You know what? Foundation was something people can't see. That's why we just, uh, you know, <laughs> just did it anyhow. But now, you see, we want to do something special with what people can see. Aha. Now you look for experts. From Australia, from UK, from all over the world, you gather them, you spend a lot of money, you do fine finishings of the building. You're wasting your time. The foundation is faulty. That building is going to crack and it's going to fall down. Can I say this? There are many people, there is, one of the major reasons why I like working with youths and my wife likes working with youths is we strongly believe that there are some people whose lives are already ruined almost beyond rectification. Through experience with my wife, that's what we have seen. I'm just telling you the way it is. I prefer working with young people because they are still um, tender-hearted. Can I give you a very simple example? I know it's a sensitive one, but it applies in any country. There's this thing of call, calling others foreigner. It happens in almost every country you go to. Foreigner. They treat you in a certain way. Now, have you ever seen if you go to children who are in preschool, do they have that foreigner thing? Yeah. They are innocent. They have the genuine love of God. As they grow slowly, slowly to become adults, that's where you see hatred of all kinds. Do you see what I'm talking about? Children are more innocent. They accept each other the way they are. They can have a child who has got one eye and they will sympathize with that child. I know there are some naughty bullies who can also be abusing, but you get what I'm trying to say? They protect each other, they understand each other, they share their food. There is a poor one who is coming from a home where there is no food. You will see another one say, please come let's share. But as we grow older, we know how to hate we know how to segregate. We know how people who have messed up their lives and at a certain age of life, there's very little you can do for them. I used to think that you can change everybody's life. I realized, no. I thank God that I have youths are listening to me right now. Mm. There are people who have developed terrible habits. It could be spiritual, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be any kind. Their minds are hardened. Their hearts are hardened. They are not willing to change. Trying to teach them, you are wasting your time. But when you work with the young people, the youths, 
I'm not saying all of them. A few youths are willing to listen. Majority of them have got so many questions. You want to teach me this? What about you? What did you do? What did you achieve yourself? Those ones don't go anywhere. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Yes. What sort of foundation are you laying as a youth? Now, I'm not saying we don't help people who are adults. We do. My wife and I, we're always counseling people. We're always coaching people. We're always... But the results are not as exciting as when you work with young people. Because you are trying to tell, for example, like right now, I record audio, videos and audios trying to teach people about marriage. You say, husband, love your wife. It's the Bible, it's not me. Love your wife, take care of your wife. Husbands must bath their wives, carry your wife, you know, show love, buy a gift. Another man, because he has got so much experience which is negative, he'll be saying, stupid man. This Mutoko, you see, these are the people who teach things that don't even make sense. What? They will criticize you. Why? Because they have already made up their minds. Those who beat their wives and do all kinds of things. They made up their minds and they have their own team of counselors <laughs> who tell them a wife must be beaten. So when you try to teach them, you are wasting your time. Why? Their foundation is faulty. Wife, submit yourself to your husband. My wife was saying the other day, it doesn't start when you are married. You decide before marriage that I will submit to my husband. Even me, when I was a boy, I decided I will love my wife. One. I've gone through so many temptations. But I still have that one wife because I made up my mind when I was a youth. It's important what you decide while you are a youth. Amen and amen. There are some men right now, they listen to people like us, then they say, this guy, <laughs> he wants to pretend to be Mr. Perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm still human. But I made a decision many years ago that I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. That's the difference. So while you are still a youth, what are those things you are saying, I will never do this, I will do this? Healthy relationships. You want to become a successful youth? If you are a successful youth, it means you are going to be a successful what? Adult. And you become a successful parent. Have you looked? Even the people who are making a lot of money today, the top richest people, they started business and making money when they were young. Now, are we saying if I'm 60, I have no hope? No. I have some hope. If I'm 70, is it meaning I don't have a hope? I might have some hope. But it can be one out of what? A million. But when you are a youth, so it could be only you who might make it. The older you become, the less your chances of become, becoming successful. Because, you know, all odds will be working against you. Have you seen, for example, you can be a lecturer, you are lecturing students, and you are 70. Just the fact that you are 70, you could be very good, but the fact that you are 70, people judge you that, ah, this old man, ah, this old woman. Is it a good thing to do that? No, but it comes natural. People just feel, ah, this Madala, why doesn't he go and what? Rest. Yeah.